Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to complete our Ramadan, another day and everything is, is uh, finishing and the farewell du'as for the holy month of Ramadan and the angel of Ramadan that bears witness to the fasting and all the tajalli that Allah is sending. The angel of Ramadan comes to accompany everyone during the month of Ramadan. We pray always that Allah accept our, our actions and that everything is an imperfection and that everything is presented to the Holy Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet's nazar to be upon that aman, that action and to perfect it. Mm. And to find things that are wrong to perfect them and present to Allah's Divinely Presence pure and purified, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah. Um, <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi, when attempting meditation I feel so restless, it feels stagnant. How to feel the realization that the quality of my meditation is getting better? The meditation in Islamic understanding is the last phase, last phase of perfection but because of dunya and the condition it is, they're allowing to be taught almost at the beginning of this way of marifa. It is the hardest step in the way of realization because the nafs is not interested in people sitting and trying to realize their potential. It is the biggest battle against the nafs to achieve that type of energy. So then to be consistent in the practice and the understanding of the madad that is not able to do by myself this discipline and to control but to have a strong understanding of the madad and support that I'm asking continuously from Allah for Divinely support, the support of Sayyidina Muhammad and the support of these authorized ulul am that they be with me, their nazar be upon me their dress be upon me and that they support me through my path and my way of realization. Then the whole system of this tafakkur on how to and the importance of listening. So when we want to make our tafakkur see the beatific sounds that we're producing with these salawats and these nats and this mafil and the zikr, we keep that all the time. So in the room that we're going to meditate has to have beatific salawats always playing beautific fragrance. So you set the whole environment, you change your clothes, don't use your work clothes for your appointment with Allah You make a whole set of different clothing that you don't wear for dunya. And then you sit and begin to make your namaz and at the end of your namaz you sit, you play your salawats and begin to connect your heart and the whole system of how to connect the heart. And we try for just a few minutes every day until you feel that you're understanding the madad and the support and you feel that you, you're true to your understanding that, I'm asking for your presence, I'm asking to be nothing and that I want to feel the presence of my shaykh is in front of me. I don't have to see anything because that's too nafsani, that's too much for my nafs. But I know that I, I'm not worthy of seeing you but I know that you're seeing me and that your soul is there and present with me. That's from iman and faith and that's when we begin to really build and establish our faith. It's one thing to say you believe, now put it into action. Where you believe, of course my, my shaykh is looking at me, the angels are looking at me, Prophet is looking at me. In my salah I say, Salaamu Alaika Ayyuha Nabi wa Ibadullahi Salihin. Allah making me to give them salams, so no doubt there if I'm giving them salams they must be there. But behind a veil of my ignorance and bad character. When I begin to burn that veil then they become more apparent to me. I feel them in the room, I feel the energy in the room. And that's what Allah wants for us is to become more subtle and more conscious of our surroundings inshaAllah.
Uh, Sayyidi, can Kush affect one's ability to mobilize physically and mental functioning and how to overcome? The question was the khashf, can it affect you? Yeah, again there's… this is a, a place of interpretation. When this authorized connection and authorized practices are coming then what these awliyaullah, what Allah is sending and by order of Allah to Prophet and then to these guides is going to be a khashf that is authorized and is enough to give the servant hope. They get hope that what they're learning is true, their way is real and it like little glimpses, glimpses for them to reach towards that reality. Hal, same thing, they give a hal like a taste, they feel an energy, they feel an excitement. It's Allah's Allah like a gift and a draw that come, keep coming, keep coming. Not one to be lost in it where it's too strong and it's overwhelming and the person can no longer function. And then the difficulty of other types of things that people may think is a khashf and it could be from other sources where they start to hallucinate or feel different experiences. That's why they teach a very systematic approach that you come, you abide by the sharia. Sometimes there's these ridiculous comments, I don't know where these people come from. Alhamdulillah the moderator should throw them out right away that, oh you people don't follow sharia and all these ridiculous things. If anyone's heard the teachings, they're teaching from the azimat of sharia. That your understanding of sharia is La ilaha illallah. Muhammadun Rasulullah it's a very basic, they go in even to the haqqaiq of what is this La ilaha illallah and the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So no doubt they're following sharia. So then the student has to be at the same that they're following the Islamic laws, guidelines, they're following the practices, they're keeping the limits of the sharia, that they're, they're not doing bizarre and inappropriate actions. When you follow the discipline and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and asking, would Prophet been doing this right now? And would he be sending what you're feeling and how you're feeling? If all of that is yes, hundred percent, this is all clean and, and right and when it's done right, yeah the feelings are coming. But there are those whom have other issues in their mind and in, in the different practices and they start to go all over the place and they start to hallucinate and, 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 and visualize inappropriate things and all sorts of places the mind can go. This has nothing to do with the mind and a weakened mind. This has to do with the heart and that heart is very difficult to open, it's not something that comes easy. That's why the shaykhs know when someone's lying. This is like a high level security training. When Allah want to open the heart, He looks to the person and says, this is a clean sincere person. That one you know their heart when they're seeing is clean and true. Someone comes to you with no background in Islamic understanding, no purity in their practices and doing bizarre things, no this not, this not tariqah, that's either playing with jinn, hallucinations, mental disabilities, all spectrum of things can be happening. This is very specific, very clean purified people who have been authorized and Allah sent them through TSA training. You know like security check training, step by step security, step by step security that these people are good, clean, struggling in their way. Then we begin to open for them that realm. But just straight off the street saying, I see this, I see that, no, no, that could be jinn, that could be your imagination, that could be lack of medication, that could be many things. That's why in that environment it's disciplined and it comes in the doses that the shaykhs can control and not, not too much of anything, inshaAllah. Um, someone was asking, Sayyidi, can you please tell us something about out of control 
body vibration, and someone else had also asked about something of dealing with electric current. Mm. Yeah. We should send the electric current to Shamash because he's sleeping. <laughs> you have that electrical wire back there, just put it under his legs. <laughs> <laughs> What was the question? So much wants electricity? <laughs> Out of control, body vibration. Anytime we're dealing with energy, there's going to be an energy. <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that, was, that was very profound. <laughs> Anytime we're dealing with energy, there's going to be an energy. I mean there's going to be, there's vibrations because everyone's at a different level of attuning, everyone's at a different frequency. That's when we talked before, when you're vibrating at a certain frequency, every lower frequency is going to have a clash. So when we're doing a lot of zikr, a lot of purification, a lot of these practices, the resonance is much higher, the zikr is much higher that soul's clarity and purity is much higher, any lower light is going to cause a, 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 a difficulty onto the light. Which is like the equivalent of if you take a little battery and stick to your tongue you get a little bit of a shock, those 9 volt batteries. I wouldn't recommend holding it too long to your tongue <laughs> like it yeah, just a little bit, mm, ow, so that you feel that, okay. That's uncomfortable and that's the understanding that an uncomfortable energy comes, you become more attuned to understanding. That way you feel, you feel like energies that are not good or are coming around, they come around your feet, your feet begin to itch. Then that's why the importance of these energy people and people whom practice energy, they live by the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Others may take it as an entertainment. But they have to live by it, means that if they're outside of wudu they begin to burn, have itching, problems, everything because all negativity is trying to come onto them. Everything that Prophet brought for them was advanced realities for purification, knowing that his nation he wants them to be the most purified nation, living upon a satanic uh, island in which every type of devil is surrounding us, how would anyone survive? If not for the grace of Allah sending the rahmah of Sayyidina Muhammad That's the way his nation would survive, they cover your head, wear your ring, put your modest clothing, protect your skin. We said before in other talks, only now we're understanding that when you cover your skin, look how many viruses you're protecting yourself from. When people are not understanding, they put a mask and they're running uh, with no clothes on. So what were they protecting? And this is the greatness of what Prophet says, it's like a father who loves you so much that he set an entire inheritance for you. That a day would come, I'm going to leave you all these tools so that you'll be safe. Then you know how much why Rasul Kareem, how much Prophet loved his nation, loves his nation that he sent all these tools for us to be protected. And how much the nation doesn't show their gratitude to Sayyidina Muhammad by not using what he left behind for them. <coughs> Sayyidi, um, if we have never had khash or hal, does it mean we are doing something wrong? No, that doesn't mean that anyone's doing something wrong but everyone is going to advance at the speed Allah wants them to advance. So it's a motivation sometimes when you hear these types of questions that there are students that are experiencing things, there are students whom Allah is opening for them. It's just a motivation in a course and in classes that I should study harder, I should try harder. I should do my, my practices with, with, with more himma and make it to be more real. So when I have a time to do my salah, I close off the doors, I make everything to be purified, I, I put my, my candle there, I put my water there for blessings, 
and then I begin to make my namaz and at the end of my namaz I connect my heart, I play some salawats, the prayer is already over. I'm playing some salawats and asking, Ya Rabbi please I, I made this salam coming into your presence, dress me from these lights and just let me to breathe from your energies and from your ni'mah. And they practice it with all sincerity and all their practices. No doubt Allah will give, that's when Allah says, ask and you receive. But if they're not doing it with that type of firmness and they just periodically come and go, come and go, then yeah, you know, as much as you put into it is what you get out of it. Put little in, you probably get very little out. Someone was asking, um, do we need permission for bayah from our family members? You need permission for bayah from your family members to be. <sighs> No, I know. If you feel that that's a concern, then wait till your heart feels a sense of peace. That if there's going to be an issue with your husband, then wait till your heart has a sense of peace and that he's comfortable and the family's comfortable with the practices because the tariqah doesn't want to come and make disturbances within the household. If it's between the understanding of the parents following a different tariqah then you have to use your diplomacy and your bayah is something that you read in between you and Allah and His Rasul It can be something very hidden and just for your personal understanding and satisfaction to your heart. It's not something that has to be publicized and told to the whole world, especially if your situation is, is of a concern to you. But one who has no concern and is, is free to do pretty much what they want to do, no, then they take their bayat and they, they join the tariqah and alhamdulillah. The bayat for Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah is to Sultanul Awliya Ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani through his representatives and the 41st Shaykh of the tariqah now is Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Azim who is heading the Naqshbandi tariqah. Your acceptance of ourselves is a sign of love that I accept and I want to learn from your teachings and that inshaAllah Shaykh Nazim to raise you, Shaykh Daghestani to raise you into their presence and to dress you and bless you inshaAllah. That's it. Thank you very much, Allah bless you, dress you. Click the link now to subscribe.